Hello my fellow garden gals and guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Serenity Now Garden. My name is Jeannie and I garden in a zone 4B in central Minnesota. So today I'm going to take you around my garden a bit. Um, I just added some new sedum that I wanted to show you. It's just the end of August here and the sedums are just about to bloom so they're just going to be gorgeous in the next couple weeks so I'll show you what I just added. And also I added more Meadow Blazing Star Liatris. I'm sure you've heard me talk about this over the last few weeks. They're just a monarch magnet. I have monarchs in my garden all the time. I just love it. There's also a few things I wanted to show you. You know, if you're gonna draw more monarchs in, it's good to have a host plant like swamp milkweed. So I might be planting that soon. I'll show you where I'm gonna plant that. But let me take you around. I got some footage of the liatris. Now there's two different liatrises that I have in my garden. You may be familiar with one or both. Um, let me put a picture here. This is like the normal floristan liatris or spicata, I believe it's called. Um, so these bloom a little bit sooner than the, the meadow liatris that I'm talking about today. The, a picture of the meadow liatris, or also put the um, name on the screen here, looks like this. So these bloom a little bit later. Uh, end of August in here in zone 4B, all the way till frost pretty much. Um, so you get a really good bloom time and like I said, it's just amazing if you wanna draw in some monarchs. I have just one in my garden and I mean, I, I have monarchs all the time, sometimes like five, six at a time. So like I said, if you really wanna bring in the monarchs into your garden, plant one of these, let me take you around and I'll give you some more information. Uh, I'll do a little voiceover when I'm taking you around my garden. So thank you guys, take care, happy gardening, and I'll see you next week. Okay, so I think I'll show you guys my front bed first. So I'm gonna show you a couple sedums here, some that I just put in. Now, what I've been trying to do is slowly convert some of these silver mount artemisias that you see on the far right in the front to some sedums. I'll show you close up and why I'm doing that. Now in this front bed, I am trying to have something bloom at all times from all the way from my bulbs from early spring through fall. So right now we have some flocks, a couple different varieties here. These are really long bloomers. I highly recommend flocks. These are just second year, so they still have a lot of growing in to do. But just a couple different colors here. I got these for like $4 each at Lowe's. And here's some pink Coreopsis. I love pink Coreopsis. It's a great drought tolerant plant if you have somewhere that's really dry. And here we have some Dianthus. Now that gives me some early summer color. Just behind that we have some creeping phlox. That gives me late spring color. Here's some, I believe this is called John Creech sedum. So that gives me some later spring color. I just put that in, so it'll kind of fill in the area. Here's the creeping phlox. This is a just gorgeous plant in the early spring, late spring. Dianthus, I, I did get a rebloom on that. That's fire witch. And then this is lamb's ears. The millennium allium's just kind of on its way out. The, uh, the blooms are past their prime, but the, it's still a gorgeous plant nonetheless. So here are the sedums that I just put in. These are called Steal the Show Stone Crop Sedum. Now they're just budding up, so you can't see the blooms yet, but this is what the blooms will look like once they're open. So this is a low growing mounding sedum. And it has like a steel blue type foliage. So I thought it was just a really good alternative to the Silver Mount Artemisias because you get the steel blue color, but you also get a bloom. I just love the mounding habit. It's great for in the front of the border here. Here's those silver mounds. Now a couple of these died. That's why I took them out. They're doing okay over here, but they just get really leggy this time of year. So they're not my favorite right now. They're really gorgeous in spring when they first emerge. But as you can see, the middle of the plant just doesn't look very well. I guess I could probably split these, but 
I don't know uh, if I'm going to go to all that trouble. I love the ice blue color, but yeah, some of these just, they don't look great, so they're not my favorite. But I think this is going to do well up here. I might switch out the other Artemisias for these steel blue. Or steal the show uh, sedums. But we'll see. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me show you a couple other sedums I have up here. This is just the Valerie Finnis Artemisia in the front, that white one. But just behind it, we have Sedum Matrona. These get really pretty, like light pink blooms. They're just starting to open. And you can see that the stems are like a purple. And pollinators love this plant. It will bloom for a few weeks to fall. Just next to it, this is a Thunderhead Sedum. This just gets a deeper pink magenta color, just starting to open. Looks really good next to this these Magnum coneflowers that are just on its way out. So the Sedums will kind of take over this bed for some late summer to fall color. And we also have some Asters that will still bloom. Love those Millennium Alliums, though. Those are my favorite. I have one other sedum I want to show you over here. This one's called a Brilliant Sedum. This gets like a really pretty powdery pink bloom on it. A really light color, like cotton candy color pink bloom. So that'll open soon as well. And I just love the gold foliage. These could take really poor soil too. And up here is kind of sandy. And let me just show you my... Uh, container here I put together. I haven't showed you this in a while, but look at this cordyline. It's so pretty. It's got like pink edges and some hot pink uh, leaves coming out of there. It looks really good with the caladiums. We'll just kind of walk past my front porch here in my side yard on my way to my, the backyard. I really want to show you guys all the liatris we have in the back. Looking good. These limelight hydrangeas. These are little limes, so they'll stay this compact. There's two plants here, and they're just starting to turn this blush color. I will be cutting these blooms off and putting them in a fall container, a dry container. It's my favorite thing to do every year. Love these plants. On my way down here, now these sedums aren't blooming yet, so I'll kind of show you next week or maybe the week after, but we have some like plum dazzled or dazzleberry sedum just starting to bloom. my little rock garden area. This is just like a 15 foot across space that I have for my side yard here. And my hosta bed on the left, just a shade bed. And this is one of my favorite views. This is my happy place in my garden. <laughs> I just love it. It's just coming together perfectly. We really did a lot of work in the last year. We had a lot of invasive buckthorn removed and we're just slowly starting to plant it up. So let me show you one of the beds here. This plant just amazes me. It's the first year I had this in here. This is a Mars Madness hibiscus. It loves moisture, it loves sun, and it has a ton of blooms. And they only last a day, but somehow it's covered in blooms every day. So, Really love that plant. It looks great next to these elderberries. Once these elderberries get bigger, I will be pruning them into tree form. And we have some gomfrina lining this bed. Let me just show you a few things before I get to the liatras. The zinnias are just amazing. These also attract the monarchs and hummingbirds. We have gomfrina on the right along with some purple print zinnias. The gomfrina still needs to turn purple. I'll give you a little close-up. But they're very vigorous. I mean, these were all from seed, direct sown. I can't wait till they get that dark purple color. These are the pink cineritas. These are my favorite zinnias right here. Yeah, they're just pollinator magnets. You guys highly recommend those. More gomfrina here. Some Flora Stanley actress on its way out on the left. Those are more like early summer 
Midsummer Blooms, and this is the Meadow Blazing Starliatris. So I do have some of this staked up. Some of it's growing a little bit sideways. I could, if I had taller stakes, I could probably get it to be a little more upright, but I kind of like it like this. Looks really cool next to this Egastachy as well. It's kind of wild everywhere. <laughs> Slowly opening. Long bloomer, too. I mean, it's already been going for weeks. Let me show you from the other angle. So, yeah, just next to the Egastachy. I just love the feathery blooms. It's just so pretty. And it's a great native plant. If you guys can't find this at your local garden center, try to find a garden center that specializes in native plants. You know, I do have one more here that I planted a few weeks ago that's just starting to open. Gorgeous as well. Bumblebees also love this plant. Isn't that gorgeous? I know the lighting is kind of weird right now because the sun's just coming up over some of these aspen trees. But, oh, man. I just love this plant. Now these spread through corms, which are kind of like bulbs. And you can split these every three to five years. So these are plants that the monarchs are just magnets to for the nectar, but they don't lay their eggs on these plants. But they will congregate around them. I just planted this one here. I kind of, I, I planted four other ones just a few days ago. This is what they look like when you first plant them or when they first come up. And I kind of just sprinkled them around the bed just to have a little bit of color everywhere. I do get at least six hours of sun here. Got a little Veronica here. Just wanted to show you. Pretty powdery pink. So yeah, like I said, the corms could be divided. Here's another one here. And this will, I have a picture of these still blooming in mid-October last year. So let me show you the other side of the bed really quick here before I get to the last two, Leatris. And I'm going to show you where I'm going to plant some milkweed. I've been showing you guys this area for the last few weeks. But look at that calamin, that diffuse white plant in the center there. So gorgeous. Everything else, it's kind of on its way out, but that's okay. So I have this path to the back part of my property. The back used to be all buckthorn. I put two liatris on each side um, towards the end of the path. I'll show you a little bit closer here. So this goes back to the more natural part of my property. We're still developing it. We have some more to clear. And it's like a wetland back there. So I'm going to plant some milkweed. Now butterflies lay their eggs on all nine varieties of milkweed. Here's the other Leatris, one on each side of this uh, path. Really cool leaves and the stalk there. But Monarch's favorite milkweeds are common milkweed and swamp milkweed, which I'll be planting way back here, and I'll show you that in a sec. Here's the other Leatris, just at the opening of this pathway. This gets the hot, hot afternoon sun here. So I think they'll like it there. So like I said, monarch butterflies have to have host plants. So if you bring them to your yard with all these zinnias and liatris, try to plant some. Here's swamp milkweed on the left there. Um, and then we're also going to plant some common milkweed, which is that there. Um, so try to plant that if you can. If you bring the monarchs to your yard, just so they have somewhere to lay their eggs. So I'll leave you guys with a little more footage of this little monarch on my Leatris. I hope you guys enjoy that. Hopefully I'll have a little more blooming next week and I'll give you another tour. So we'll see. I might do a little plant haul too. But love those monarchs. All right, you guys. Well, happy gardening and we'll see you next week. Take care.